Howdy y'all, my name is Parjay Savid from Nexi Clan, Illinois, and we're going to be doing the basic armor making tutorials. So for the basic armor construction, we're going to be working on the torso armor, the thigh armor, and the shin armor. All these templates can be found on the Mandalorian Mercs website under the costume templates and tutorials. So these are going to come off the templates in standard sheets. And you're going to cut them out along the lines where the black is. Trim them out. They have different size templates, so choose the best one for your height. Though you are going to have to make sure that the templates itself are going to be able to fit your person. The most important thing when it comes to doing modern style chest plates is the spacing. So making sure that the spacing between your chest diamond your collar and your chest plates is all even in, co um, in correlation with what the CRLs tells you. The only way that you can make sure that your spacing is correct before you start cutting your Cintra or whatever material you're using is to tape the templates onto yourself. Um, then you're going to take a photo have, or have someone take it for you and contact your local wrestler to make sure that placements is correct. Also, make sure you're posting your whips on the forms. It's super important to do to get outside feedback. Another thing that is super important is your sizing. So sizing for your armor to make sure it's not too large or too small for you. So in this case, the template's straight out of the printer. The collar is not supposed to go past my shoulders. This is going to impinge movement and making sure that the edge of your chest, um, of your chest plate is matching up with the edge of your collar plate. All right, so like I said in the past video, making sure that the templates are sized to you correctly. So you're gonna to wanna to tape on, especially the boot armor and the knee armor to make sure that they are your size. As you can tell in with this template, I probably need to trim down the edges of the knee armor so it can lay flush against my knee. With the boot armor, you wanna make sure if you have boots with laces, you're covering all of the laces. Cool, awesome, now let's move on. All right, so there's different materials that we can be using as your medium for your Mandalorian armor. The one that we mainly use is Sintra, which is a PVC expanded foam used in three millimeter or six millimeter. You can be using PVC, actual PVC pipes or one of these five gallon buckets. You can be using a Rubbermaid um, top, not Rubbermaid uh, bin. These are super easy to work with and they do not break or snap unlike Sintra. Or one of the mediums is using cardboard and fiberglassing over it. Using this method is a little bit more difficult because you're going to be working with fiberglass, but it is doable. Now, when you get to the part of actually cutting your material, the tools you're going to need are vastly different because cutting Sintra is quite easy. You can, you, you can even use scissors cutting it because it's really soft and pliable. Most people, if you don't have power tools, you can use a box cutter or an X-Acto knife and just score it and then snap it at the lines and then sand it down. Now when you get to like Rubbermaid bins, because of the material that's made out of than the plastic they use and PVC pipes, using a knife is actually dangerous and it's not recommended because you can cut yourself because it's such a strong material. So that's when you have to get to power tools. Now you can use corded or um, cordless, but I prefer to use a saber saw, but any type of jigsaw or saber saw or anything that, that can actually cut through it really quickly with a sharp blade is what you're looking for. Now. When you get to more advanced materials like um, fiberglass, now fiberglass is easy to cut, but it just takes a lot more time and energy to make it just because of the process of curing the uh, resin in the fiberglass. Now, when you use something like uh, a bin, a storage bin, a PVC pipe, it's very important to remember that there's already coatings of preservatives on the plastic so unlike Sintra where all you have to do is scuff it and you can paint right on it, cardboard, you have to really um, fiberglass it, then you have to sand it down, then you have to prime it multiple times to actually get it to stick to it. Rubbermaid bins are the worst because they don't really want to absorb anything, so you really have to work the uh, paint into it and buy the correct type of spray paints to actually bind with the plastic. Same with PVC. Alright, so no matter what tool or material that you're using, it is important to have proper protective equipment. That means iPro when you're dealing with cutting, or a respirator when you're dealing with sanding things. Alright, so the first method that I'm going to be showing you is using a box cutter to cut Sintra. This is an easy scoring, so you're going to cut here. And make sure you are cutting where the line is drawn.
Don't worry about digging the um, blade directly into the Sintra itself. This method right now, you are scoring the Sintra and making a line for it, so it's easier for you to go back and <clears throat> cut deeper. Alright, so this is where you're going to start digging a little bit deeper into the plastic now that you've scored the piece. For that time, easy snap. Alright, so this might not be the most time conservative method. It took me about two minutes just to cut out the collar plate, and you still have a bunch of armor to go through. But if you don't have power tools, this is a way that you can cut your Sintra. Now the next method I'm going to be going through is using the scissor method. One thing that I would discourage about the scissor method is that it can actually crack the Sintra and the plates that you're working with. So you have to cut super carefully and make sure that you're using a sharp knife. So unlike, unlike the blade, where you can get smooth cuts and not worry about too much cracking scissors because of that motion, you are bound to somehow um, crack the Sintra. Alright, so you could tell that by using the scissors, you could cut the Sintra. However, doing the scissor method, it's a little bit, um, it's well, it's better for uh, straight lines. Doing compound curves for stuff as like the chest diamond or the ab plate is going to be a little bit more tricky. Unlike a razor blade or scissors, a saber saw is a lot more powerful and can cut through practically anything in your workshop, including your fingers. So please be very careful, wear eye protection, and take your time. Don't be afraid of the tool. If you're not confident on how to use it, find somebody to show you how to use it. Just take your time and be careful. Alright, so I'm going to cut out the chest plate itself first. It's a lot easier to when you're working with smaller pieces, especially when it comes to power tools. <laughs> that we just cut out the chest plate. Now there's a bunch of fray marks that from the, uh, sab from the saber saw. What you're going to do is you're going to take a uh, sandpaper, smooth on the obvious edges, and you're good to go for your chest piece. So after you have cut out all of your Sintra plates, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to heat up the plastic. However, there's something that you should note about heating up Sintra especially, is if you burn it or you blister the plastic, it releases a toxic fume. Ways that you can do that is keeping the heat gun on the particular area for too long of a period of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the heat gun, make sure all the rest of your plastic is out of its way, and you're going to start heating it up. Something about thermal plastics is you need to make sure you're giving equal amounts of heat on both sides of the actual plastic. This works for PVC, Sintra, and all the other means of kinds of plastics. And you 
you'll know when the centret is ready to be molded to you is when it starts to become malleable and almost like a flimsy texture. All right, the next thing you're going to do once it is malleable, so you're going to place this on the by your collar. Make sure it's almost to the, your, the nape of your neck, and you're going to press down on the corners. All right, if you can have someone else help you with this, that makes it a little bit easier, but you can do this on by yourself. One thing you can also do is to have be standing in front of a mirror to make sure you're lining all the pleats up correctly. All right, so moving on to the chest piece. Uh, something to note is we do have a female armor section on the forums, or you can check out other tutorial videos for femme armor or femme plates. What we're going to be focusing on is the unisex Mandalorian armor. All right, now we're going to be starting with the chest plate. So what you're going to do again is heat up the chest plate the same way we did the collar plate. Make sure that it's super malleable, that's going to be necessary for the chest weights especially. Lay it on yourself. Another way that you can also do this is to make a duct tape dummy, which is just have, duct, have a t-shirt, you're going to wrap yourself in duct tape. This usually works best if you have another person helping you with that. And you can form it to the, tor to the bust. And you're noticing some gappage on the side. You want to make sure it's staying flush to your um, to your torso. All right. I'm going to do the same thing with the second chest plate, and we're going to take a look at the results. All right. Moving down the plate. So we had the collar. We've done the chest plate. Now we're working on the ab plate. We're going to do exactly the same method. Is heating it up. I'm if you're noticing that some of your plates are not forming exactly the shape of your body, what you're going to want to do is heat in small little sections and instead of heating up the entire plate. You're going to place this a little bit above your belly button. You're going to press down and you're going to form it to yourself. Unseat up like that, let it cool, and you have an ab plate. Alright, so for the shin plates, there's different methods of um, make, having the shin plates. You see some people having them a little bit squared, but for simplicity factors, we're just going to do a curved shin plate. Um, ways that you can attach this to your flight suit, which you can have a huge piece of velcro up the top and have buckles along the side, but all that choice is up to you. Alright, and there we have it, a full set of Mandalorian armor. Howdy y'all, we're going to be talking about the basics of painting and weathering in this video. One thing that you should note is the safety of spray painting. You never want to do it indoors unless you have a properly ventilated area, such as this garage. So. Whenever you're painting, you always want to carry a respirator or some sort of mask. Alright? Cool. Okay, so the first step is you're going to want to sand down your Sintra. You want to make sure that there's some ridges in the actual Sintra. So using a 150 um, grit sandpaper would be best. You want to have some sort of texture so that your primer can actually stick to the plastic. If it's a smooth type of material like Sintra is prior to sanding it down, your primer will not stick to the plastic and you're going to have a lot of pull from the paint and it actually may chip, which is not what you want. Um, another thing you want to do, or not want to do, is you never want to mix paint. So if you're using Rust-Oleum, stick with Rust-Oleum. If you're using Krylon, stick with Krylon. Never mix the two paints because that can cause chipping, which will mean that you have to sand down your entire plate and it's going to take a lot more time. Alright, so what you want to do is make sure all of your edges are sanded down smooth uh, to a smooth edge. That will make your finished product look a lot better. So 
if you're comparing it to this chest plate right here, the sides here is not smoothed down. It doesn't look finished. However, here, that is the finished work. Next thing you want to do is making sure that your scuff, like I mentioned earlier, is where you're scuffing the actual plate. This gives it texture for you to actually have clean stick to the plastic. So as you can see, there are slight scuff marks in the plastic. All right, you wanna make sure that you are using a primer that's meant for plastic, and you're gonna shake up the bottle, just like it says on the instructions down here, or just shake it until you know that the paint is mixed. Then we're gonna spray the paint. Make sure it is a primer. If you're using any other types of spray paint, it will not bind to the plastic. All right, let me paint this up while I put the respirator on, and we'll be back. All right, so when you're spraying the uh, spray paint, what you wanna do is you're gonna do long, even strokes. for this to dry off and once it does we're going to start with the second layer all right when painting you want to make sure that you don't have any pools in your paint because that can start to cover crust up and doesn't give it a finished look so this is the second second coat of primer that you're going to use for your plate two coats of primer. Next up after this is going to be the metallic undercoat. Alright, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to smooth down the uh, primed plastic with 220 uh, um, sandpaper. This is to get rid of any of the lines that you made priorly. Compare the two. All right, so for this plate, I'm going to spray down the base layer of the metal aluminum. This is to give it the metallic um, color underneath for the weathering. The same way that you did the primer, you're going to do a light coat. Making sure that there is no pooling. You want to cover the plate, you're good to go. For this plate, we're going to spray it with the color of your choice.
And you're gonna wait for these things to dry. All right, for this, we're gonna be using a liquid latex. However, you can be using um, toothpaste to create a chip weather method. So for this, the idea is to make uh, patterns in the armor that d looks like you just got hit by a uh, blaster fire or paint chipping just from constant rubbing against the different plates. You also want it to look randomized, so in a non-patterned look. I typically hit the edges. All right, so for this part of the weathering technique, um, I'm letting the latex currently dry for this part for the paint chipping. So we're gonna be doing the um, method where you're actually just black washing and like, kind of like scuffing the armor. So I'm actually using steel wool as one of the mediums. So in order to apply a black wash, what you wanna do is you use acrylic paint, mix it with a bit of the uh, water that you have, and you're gonna apply this to the armor. All right, so this method is the uh, dry buff brushing method. So the reason that I'm using uh, steel wool is it kind of digs into the actual um, Sintra itself and into the paint. So this might seem like it's a uh, lot of paint, and yeah, it is. So you're gonna wanna wipe it off. and focus along the edges. As you can tell, see there's like some score marks. That's what the effect that's the effect that you're going for. Once you're weathering your plates, you want to make sure that you're also weathering your soft parts in the same amount that you're weathering your plates. So if your plates are weathered, you want to make sure your vest and your arm your uh, undersuit is also weathered down. Otherwise, it's going to look unnatural. So 
So I have a little bit of um, silver paint and you're just going to kind of brush down the edges. This gives it the ch paint chip effect without having uh, the latex or the um, um, tooth toothpaste. Alright, so after the paint dried, I already started a little bit, but you are actually going to peel the uh, latex off. And this forms a chipping pattern within the armor. And you have to make sure that both layers of paint are completely dry before you do this, or you can risk um, messing up your paint. If you're doing this with toothpaste, the best way to do this is to get a sponge and rinse it under water as you're scrubbing away at the top layer very carefully. And then you're going to do a dry brushing on the outside in order to get the uh, weathered black wash to look like you've been rolling in the mud. Again, I'm using um, steel wool for this. You can take a paper. And for this time for the steel wool, I'm just using this as an applicator for the acrylic. I'm not actually trying to scratch any of the paint off. Alright, so these are the two different methods of weathering. This one is the um, latex method, and this one is the scuffing method, and the and dry, dry brushing. So, note that if you are to do your kits, you have to choose one or the other. You're not able to interchange the types of weathering technique. You also want to make sure that the weathering technique that you choose is consistent throughout all of the... Uh, plates that you're choosing and as I said before make sure that the soft parts itself is exactly the same um, weathered like. Alright so this concludes the uh, painting and uh, weathering tutorial. Have a great day!